Ed Rooney uh, just to mention a few. Does that mean tonight they're going to be looking possibly for the defense to, to carry the load? Well, I think our swimming team has indicated that, John. Although I, I think once we get a couple on the board, you know, we're going to get a little confident. I think we're going to see a few real good offensive teams. And, you know, the first night of the season, we've got young kids, a lot of kids that, you know, graduated, and uh, they really don't know what to expect. Coach, in the past, when Glenville's come down here, they've, they've been a big play team. Maybe they haven't been able to put together the 60 to 80 yard drives, but sometimes they'll break a back, uh, possibly on a broken play, for a, a big gainer or maybe even a score. Is that the type of a team you're looking for uh, tonight from Glenville? Yeah, always. They've always got that great speed. I mean, they've always got a couple of receivers. Keep you deep, and they've always got a couple of backs that, you know, always have that speed. And they've always had a quarterback that can get the ball on field for you. So, yeah, you've got a defensive field there. I noticed in looking at the uh, program tonight that many of their uh, skilled positions are back again this year so that it uh, looks like it should be a good ball game. Yeah, we expect a real good ball game from them. I, I, was, I was really impressed with their organization and their execution when they got the swimming last week. So, you know, we're young and inexperienced. And hopefully, uh, defensively, we're going to play a great game. And I think that if we do that, we're going to win. Coach, our very best to you and the Worcester Generals tonight. Uh, win number one in, in this 1986 season. Thank you, John. Thank you. Stay tuned. We're going to be right back and win. Here are the starting lineup for tonight's game. For the Worcester Generals, the defensive unit. Defensive guard, number 53, senior Andy Seifert. At defensive guard, number 78, senior co-captain Mike McLean. At linebacker, number 25, senior Matt Totten. At linebacker, number 60, senior co-captain Doug Glasgow. At defensive end, number 59, senior Brian Finnecum. At defensive end, Number 57, senior Steve Cooper. At linebacker, number 21, senior Brad Warner. At linebacker, number 18, senior Matt Smith. At defensive halfback, number 44, senior John Hayes. At defensive halfback, number 11, senior co-captain John Murphy. And at defensive safety, number 90, Mitch Fleet. Coach Gary Green and the rest of the Worcester Generals. Worcester's head coach is Coach Bob McFarland. the pregame is just about over. It's always tough to get too much uh, information on a visiting team with the opening game, but I think you have been able to uh, get a little bit on Glenville. Do you want to share that? Sure thing, John. Starting Glenville, right as you know, is, uh, on, uh, season That's open for the past three game. seasons. I believe Butters. this is our fourth time, and uh, the they are the same it. type of ball club. They are a big play ball club. Uh, they've got uh, their skill positions are loaded again. They've got all their men back. 
Uh, quarterback Martin Hayes, number 10, will be one to really watch. Uh, he can run with the ball and he can pass, and uh, he's a magician with that ball back there. Uh, running with him, fullback uh, Dave Mitchell, number 20. The tailback is Brian Wall, 38. Now, uh, those boys really uh, aren't that big, but they can really move with the ball. Defensively, uh, you have to watch out for uh, Darnell, Dar D. Arnold is his name, I'm sorry. Number uh, 66 and uh, number 33, Joseph Sanders. They're going to be linebackers, and then you have the monster back, Lenny Davis, number 37. But these uh, boys aren't really that big, but they move, and they move good. Uh, the last three seasons, as we said, they've started out with Worcester and they've ended up on the losing end. But each year they come back and uh, they either win the Senate Conference up in Cleveland or they come pretty close. Last year, after the trouncing they got down here, they went back home and they had a, a good 8-2 and two season. So both teams finishing out last year 8-2. and uh, Going to start out this year if they can, each looking for win number one. Uh, as you saw, Glenville just getting back onto the field. Worcester already out on the field, getting ready to kick off from the north end of the field. From the right of your picture, they will be uh, going left or south. Worcester tonight in their uh, blue jerseys, gold pants, white helmets. Uh, the Glenville Tar Blooders from Cleveland, Ohio, are dressed uh, in white helmets, white jerseys, white pants with uh, cardinal red, I would call that trim, on their uniforms. And Tony, although Worcester did win last year's game, as I recall, the score at halftime was only six to nothing. So uh, certainly Worcester did not uh, blow away Glenville early. They were in the dogfight. Uh, it was. Uh, you have to remember that these Cleveland schools have got uh, uh, to come from all over the city to go to different schools up there. So they really don't have that much time to really practice and get the uh, fundamentals down. Last year, if you remember, uh, they more or less self-destructed. Uh, as you probably watched football the other night, uh, I think Ohio State self-destructed a little bit there. And uh, yes. it, it's, it's hard. And I think by the time, though, they get up in the Senate Conference, they've Shear. really gelled. Shear gets the uh, kickoff, the whistle, the kickoff. It is taken by number 20. That is David Mitchell. Comes up the left sideline and is brought down at about the 30-yard line. It'll be first and ten for the Tar Blooders as they spot that ball. It's just across the 30-yard line. Calls the 31. And Worcester's defense will be tested early. This is a unit that uh, we will try and pick up uh, for you as soon as we can. But uh, with a few exceptions, it's, it's a unit that uh, was very strong last year and is going to be counted on uh, early. There is a double reverse on the first play. Steve Cooper reads it out and he dumps him for a loss. Steve Cooper stayed home, number 57. He's a veteran. He started last year defensive end. And that was almost a 10-yard, that was a 10-yard loss. Back to the 22. Steve so. Cooper played that the way a defensive end should play it. Uh, he stayed there. He, guarded, he looked to the other side to see if the uh, reverse was working. When he saw it was a double reverse, he stayed there and pinned the man back there for a 10-yard loss. It will bring up a second and 20 situation. Let's see if they go to the air. Going back, looking, looking, got plenty of time. Now throws across the field. The receiver fell down, and there is a, now a flag on the field, and we may have interference. We'll have to wait and see. The intended receiver was number 20, David Mitchell. Well, we have a break here, John, uh, waiting for the... Uh, uh, he's going to be pushing against uh, Worcester. Defensive pass interference against the general. Tony, you had the list of officials for tonight's game? Yes, referee tonight, Mike Lezak. Umpire is Herb Neesbaum. Headlinesman is Ron Desiker. Line judge is Don Peterman. And the back judge is Ron Douglas. The officials are now marching off the penalty against the generals. It brings the ball out to the 36-yard line. It is not, however, a first down. It will make it, uh, well, yes. No. Yes, it goes. Okay, now they're moving the chains. They were uh, very slow in, in taking care of that business, but it is a first down. It's at the 36-yard line. And a little counter play. Fumble. The ball was fumbled. 
And, and Worcester, Worcester has recovers. It. Let's see who got that ball for the Generals. Number 18, Matt Smith. So Matt Smith, the outside linebacker, is able to uh, recover that fumble. Tony, while we're getting the uh, Worcester offense on the field, we'll take a break and be right back. At this choice strip-steak dinner, or this great tasting chicken dinner, these and many more delicious dinners are available from Degler's Restaurant on Lincoln Way, east of Worcester. In this commercial, we decided to show you how good the food actually looks, not use still photos of dinners like some places. At Degler's Restaurant, these are just a few of the great dinners and sandwiches waiting for you. Stop by Degler's Restaurant in the Wayne Lanes Plaza. Edinger's Furniture is this area's leader for top quality, well-built furniture at a price you can't afford. They carry a large selection of recliners, just the thing for the weekend sports watcher. Edinger's has recliners for as low as $99 by fine companies like Lane and Franklin. Edinger's also has Eagle and Acme brand pick groups available in over 100 different fabrics for only $549. Edinger's is also your mobile home supply store for such items as replacement windows and plumbing fixtures. Edinger's Furniture in the Het Shopping Center on Lincoln Way East, Worcester. Worcester offense on the field. Matt McCoy, the junior quarterback. We'll give you the rest of that uh, lineup in a second. Murphy in motion. Tony Lee, the tailback, gets the call. Goes up the middle for about uh, four tough yards. By the way, when they finally spotted that ball after the fumble, it was right on the 25-yard line. So Worcester enjoying good field position as a result of that turnover. And as uh, we said before, uh, Glenville last year self-destructed with mistakes. John Hayes, number 44, coming in with the play. He and uh, Mitch Sleek, both uh, wide receivers, look like they may alternate uh, tonight rather than the system of the uh, guards that was used last year by Coach McFarland. Again, it's uh, Tony Lee mm -hmm. off left tackle. Tony getting good yardage. Looks like he's got a first down. Inside the 15, First call it that. Goal. Tony looks like the 13 to me. It is the 13-yard line. That was a pickup of eight yards. Tony Lee and uh, Brett Birdno probably will be uh, alternating in there tonight. At the tailback First spot. Well, I'll check that. It looks like Brett's going to be the uh, fullback tonight. Birdno is the fullback yes. tonight. They're going to use both those gentlemen. There's Tony Lee, Lee same again. way. He smells pay dirt. He's about a yard or two short. Down to the two-yard line. Tony, it was a nice run, but let's give some credit to that offensive line. They sure blew Glenville back off the line of scrimmage. The difference right now is the offensive line. They are uh, just up on the ball. They're moving the defense back. Worcester out of the huddle in that three deep that we've seen so often over the years. Nothing doing. They're right on the goal line. Number 30 sneaking into the backfield for the Generals to give them is Mark Newcomer to give them the three deep back there. Mm -hmm. Tony, uh, Tony Lee was the ball carrier. It looks like Newcomer's going to stay ball. in. Ball inside the one yard line. Corey Hupp, number 62, is coming in with the play. And uh, uh, Doug Glasgow out. Uh, messenger guard. Again, the three deep. Uh, Tony Lee in the middle. Mark Newcomer to the left. Brett Burno to the right. This time, well, the ball is loose. Mm. It looks like Glenville's got it. A very costly turnover yeah. for the Generals. And that was a fumble by Lee. So each team has hurt themselves early. And that is a costly one for the Generals. Uh, they can smell pay dirt there. That ball is about on the two-yard line. Glenville will, First of course, have Glenville. to uh, protect. As you can see on the screen, we've got 8-14 remaining here in the first quarter of play. We're at Mauer Field. John Hevlin and Tony Catan's right with the action. Glenville calling signals. They drop back the pass. They throw it outside incomplete. 
It was intended for number 21, that's Victor Williams, and John Hayes, number 44, provided the coverage for the general. Uh, Victor Williams is a uh, veteran of last year's team, and he's the split end you're going to have to watch. He could fly down that sideline. You notice they're throwing away from John Murphy, who is the other halfback. The safety in the middle this year is uh, Mitch Sleek. Mitch uh, replaces Jeff Cap, who held down that uh, kind of a uh, uh, key position. We've got a second and 10 from the two, and there's a whistle. I don't know, they took a long time. Will it be delay a game? No, huh? Glenville's clapping. That ball foul and Clarkson against the general. Worcester apparently lined up yeah. offside, right. Tony. Well, that's an easy five yards right. for Glenville. It'll make it second and five. Second down five. Ball the seven yard line. The ball is fumbled. It touchdown. is a touchdown for the Generals. The ball was fumbled in the backfield. They're still fighting for the ball, but the officials have signaled touchdown Worcester. Number 60. Doug Glasgow, oh. if, if they give it to number 60. That touchdown is scored by Doug Glasgow. Brian, Brian Wall, number 38, finally ended up uh, with the ball, but apparently he pulled it away from Doug. So Glenville fumbles the second time, and it uh, gives the Generals a uh, seven-yard touchdown. Cheer to kick. Leak to hold. And it looks good to me. It is. It's good. So Worcester goes on top seven to nothing with 742 remaining in the first quarter. And we'll take a break and be right back with a kickoff. Hi, I'm Tom Lyon. Performance Pontiac Old GMC Truck, 1363 Lincoln Way West, Worcester. Stop and see me. Take advantage of our low financing, dependable vehicle, and courteous service. That's Tom Lyon, Performance Pontiac Old GMC Truck, your complete transportation center. freshman guard on the High State women's basketball team. I really enjoy playing basketball, not because I'm good at it, but because I give it my all. And I couldn't do that if I consumed alcohol, and neither can you. Find yourself a sport or activity that you can give it your all, and stay away from alcohol. If you're dedicated enough to your sport or activity, you'll know enough to say no to alcohol. Brought to you by the Ohio High School Athletic Association and the Ohio Cable Television Association. Tony, over the years, Worcester has certainly had a tradition of going for the extra point uh, with the kick, and it looks like uh, Mr. Shear is going to continue that tradition this year. I was down at the uh, scrimmage last Saturday night against the Lions, and Shear looked very good, although uh, Worcester did go for a two-point one time and made that one. Denny gets ready to kick it off. He's waiting for the whistle. Glenville, who has been stung by a couple of costly mistakes, costly fumbles, has given up the seven points to the Generals. Good kick, taken on the point. five, sweeping to the left side, and it uh, is number 30, Newcomer. Mark Newcomer. Newcomer. Let me mention to you briefly that each week a broad view of the area of people, places, and things is what you'll find on Panorama with Mark Glasgow Thursday Thursdays at 5.30 p.m. on CATV9. It is first down for the Tar Blooders. The ball is spotted uh, just shy of the 15-yard line, their own 15. The clock is wound down to 7.18 remaining here in the first quarter. The give is 
No, I thought it was up the middle at the outside, and Brad Warner, number 21, comes up from his outside linebacker position. Uh, number 78 was the one on there first. Uh, he got his uh, uh, Mike Pegram. Pegram. And he lost uh, about a half a yard on that, John. Tony, we might mention Tony that uh, Mike play, last year played line. almost exclusively offensive tackle, but uh, has broadened his horizons this year in terms of going both ways. And uh, this year, a couple additional players, uh, or more players, are going both ways than a year ago. Second down, there was no gain. Dropping back to pass out in the flat. It is intercepted by John Murphy. Murphy. There it oh, is. what an interception. John Murray just... Dove at the ball and came up with it. Tony John does play uh, basketball and uh, as well uh, and baseball as well, and uh, his hands paid off for him that time. Uh, you uh, you are not going to be able to pass that ball that softly on that sideline there, John. Uh, of course, John also. I guess we have to mention he does go both ways and is a receiver. He just <laughs> showed you how good he can catch. That's excellent field position again on a 15-yard line 15 of the Tarbletters. Matt McCoy, Birdno, and Tony Lee in the eye backs behind McCoy. Gives it to Tony Lee, right tackle, tripped over his own man, but still got about four. It'll bring up a second and a long six. We might mention some of the other area teams are opening their season tonight. The Triway Titans are playing uh, Nora Wayne. Uh, Smithville Smithies are going against Indian Valley North, and Waynedale plays Fairless. So uh, three good area contests going on tonight, and our uh, best wishes are with those local teams. Second, and as I said, six, Tony Lee, right tackle. Not quite as much this time, just a yard or two. It'll bring up uh, third and five. Third down four. Always trying to bring you the Alexa best Ryan picture here on cable TV nine. Four We're four in a three twilight three when it's uh, tough to tell that camera down. whether it's day or night. Four, three, I, I know you can down almost down talk to machines eight, nowadays and computers, so we'll try and tell ours to keep the you viewers uh, with the best possible picture. Third and five, let's see if the generals go to the air. No, they do not. It's a sweep to the outside. Tony Lee finds some running room, and he's got the first, first down. down. And again, Tony, uh, certainly nice bit of running by Tony Lee, but also the good blocking out in front. I wish we had the slow motion or an instant replay so we could share with the folks uh, the, the blocks that are thrown for the, the fine runners. John Hayes brings in the play, number 44. Ryan Finnecum, number 59, over the ball at center. Ryan, a great special teams player last year. Got his shot at center this year. Tony Lee, right tackle, bounces off one, and he's in. He Touchdown. Good Bo running, good second effort there. He was hit, bounced off, and just kept right on going. I also he scored from four yards out. Also like the way he seemed to have both points of that ball covered. He wasn't going to get it uh, jarred loose that time, Tony. 13 to nothing, Worcester with the extra point to try to come. That'll be uh, Denny Shear. 4.35 still remaining here in the first quarter as Worcester has capitalized on two fumbles to give them great uh, field position and scores. Mitch Leak puts the uh, ball down, but not this time, I'm afraid. No good. Generals lead 13 nothing. So the extra point try is no good, and Worcester is now on top 13 to nothing, as I mentioned, with 435 remaining here in the first quarter. Tony, while we have a second, we've got a uh, veteran coaching staff for the Generals, with uh, one exception. And that is a, a young man named Mike Gallagher. Mike Gallagher has come in this year, and uh, believe it or not, we're not going to have to put up with Gary Green next door. Gary has taken over the uh, defensive coordinator spot, and he is down on the sidelines. Uh, Coach Gallagher will be up here next door with uh, Coach uh, uh, Larry Foltz to uh, be uh, checking out the play from this uh, bird's eye view this year. Well, I'm sure uh, the kids are probably glad to see Gary Green down there. 
he's got a rapport with him. Not that the other coaches have don't, but uh, he's uh, he's got that something special when he's dealing with these young men, and it works out real well. There's the whistle. There is uh, Denny Shears' kick. It drives back the uh, Glenville player to the 10. He's out to the 20. He's picking a hole. He's still on his feet at the 35. And it looked like uh, Matt Coton, number 25. Excuse me, I think I said Coton. Uh, I hear the field announcer pronoun pronouncing that's Totten. So we'll go with Totten. Let uh, us remind you that next Friday night we will be at Triway High School to bring you the Triway Titans against the Worcester Generals. And it uh, will be broadcast, of course, at 11 p.m. right here on Cable TV 9. Opening play, there is a bomb down the field. Hayes covering. Incomplete. They went for it all. Marty Hayes, the quarterback, throwing to number 21, Victor Williams. And Vic Williams is the one that I told you he can fly down that side. Uh, that time, I think Williams just hesitated one moment there to see where the ball was. He should have kept running there while he was looking for it. Second down from the 31-yard line. Split back. There's the pitch to the outside. Matt Smith knocks down the ball carrier who let go with a pass just as he was being hit. He tried to get it out to the tailback. Wall, number 38. Brian Wall, but it is incomplete and will bring up now a third down in 10 situation. Not a, a badly conceived play. It, it was a very nice play. The only thing is uh, the uh, Worcester linebacker, Matt Smith in this case, just stayed on him and, and forced him to throw the ball quicker than he wanted to. Here is Matt McCoy, number uh, 15, coming in uh, defensively. It seems uh, so far that uh, the Tarp Brothers are, their game plan is to throw the ball. Tony course, Ice. They really haven't had much success uh, running the ball yet. Excuse me, I didn't mean to interrupt, but uh, we missed a flag, an eligible yeah, receiver downfield. Down and the Worcester does take that penalty. So it uh, takes the ball back to the 31 yard line, third down and 15 for the Tar Blooders. And they are going back to pass. Rolling out is Hayes. He finally lets fly. He's got a man open. And it's Sleek intercepted. intercepted. Mitch Sleek. Mitch Sleek. And that was a well thrown ball. Oh, Mitch just cut right in front of it and took it. Just at the last second, Mitch Sleek slipped in in front of the intended receiver which was number 80, Rich Mitchell. So the second interception of the night, John Murphy picked up one, now Mitch Sleek picks up one. Mitch, of course, another young man with good hands. He plays a wide receiver position and uh, also is the holder on the uh, extra points and field goal tries, so you know he's got sure hands. Well, one thing about having wide receivers is the defensive backs, you know they've got good hands. That's for sure. <laughs> Murphy to the top of the screen, Hayes to the bottom, but it's Tony Lee, the workhorse, going up the middle, crosses uh, the midfield stripe down about the 46-yard line, picks up seven or eight on that play. This is the 10th play from scrimmage for the Generals, and Tony Lee has ran every one of them so far, John. Shades of Wong win a year ago. Well, I know Coach McFarland has been very pleased with the uh, work of uh, Brett Birdno in the scrimmages, and I uh, can't help but uh, believe as soon as they start keying on Tony, he'll switch off. Second and three yards for the Generals. Tony Lee on a bit of a counter play. He's got the first down and more. He's down to the 40-yard line. He has stumbled a little bit out of the backfield, but was able to, with good balance, hold himself up until he got down to the 40, which was enough for the first down and a couple extra. Mitch Sleek coming off the field. John Hayes coming on with the play. Gives it to junior quarterback Matt McCoy, number 15. And here comes Hayes then to the bottom of your screen. Murphy again to the top. High backs behind McCoy. First and 10 for the Generals. 
They're in the tar blooder territory. McCoy back to pass. Looking down the field for Murphy, it was overthrown. John made a valiant effort, but it was a good three yards beyond. John, by the way, Tony was open, wasn't it? He had his man beat. I think if uh, McCoy would have lobbed that just a little bit higher there, I think we'd have been all right. But it's the first game. There's, there's a lot of yes. jitters. Uh, yes. They have to get out of their system. Though his uh, protection was very good. And the blocking, John. I'm very elated over the, uh, the blocking. Well, I, I think quick. I file that play in my, my <laughs> uh, list of plays. And I come back to it. It'll work. Second and ten now for the general. In the eye back. McCoy this time to Tony Lee. Hurdled some players, but he is hit hard. Right at the line of scrimmage. He might even have lost a yard on the play. Uh, the forward progress, they get they put it uh, a loss of one yard. So it is third and ten. This is the first time the Generals have uh, stalled a little bit offensively tonight, with the exception of a, a fumble right down there on the goal line early. We're down to a minute in uh, 40 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. It has uh, been a relatively quick first quarter. Worcester picking up two scores, leading 13 to nothing. McCoy hid that ball beautifully, throws it too high for the tight end, Matt Smith. He was well covered, though, I would have to say, by number 20, Dave Mitchell. So Worcester will be forced to punt, and we'll have to see who is going to be doing the punting for the Generals tonight. I believe it'll be Matt Smith. Yes. Matt, of course, going both ways this year, a tight end, uh, outside linebacker, and now being uh, called upon to do the punting as well. Gets off uh, one off the side of his foot. He gets a good roll, but it's picked up on the run by the Glenville back. And the last man back. made the tackle. And that was the punter, Matt Smith. Yes. Matt Smith's punt returned by Brian Wall. Tony, that came very close to being one of the big plays that I talked about. Yes, yeah, it certainly was. Uh, Matt kind of rushed that one that time. I, uh, there was no rush at all on him. I, I think he could have taken his time. Tony, uh, we would encourage our viewers to start the school year with a new Worcester Generals watch for only $7. They're available at Worcester Music Booster Concession Stand at all home football games or by calling 264-2674. And there is a bomb, and it just missed. Oh, and my. And Vic Williams was there. It was in his hands. Wow. Talk about a big play. That came very close to connecting. And Marty Ames showed that he can unload. Mitch Sleek, uh, number 90, back there providing the coverage, and he was providing pretty good coverage, but they almost connected on that one. Here comes uh, Tony Lee in defensively for the Generals. He's, uh, now there he goes out again. And he's really having to hustle. Second and 10, there's a whistle. Just as the play was about to start, I don't know if it was because Tony Lee didn't get off the field or not. We just have to wait and see. We're down under a minute, 55 seconds. Worcester has called timeout. That's what it was. Probably an alert to uh, call since they were afraid that uh, they had 12 men on the field, Tony. While we have this timeout, let's uh, run down the generals uh, defensively as we have it. First, the defensive backs, uh, John Hayes, he is a, a veteran. He is a senior, number 44. In the middle, as I mentioned, replacing Jeff Camp is Mitch Sleek, number 90. And uh, John Murphy, and again, another veteran senior and a co-captain this year, number 11 at the other half pack. The outside linebackers tonight are Brad Warner, number 21, and uh, Matt Smith, number 18. Inside linebackers, although they will change, uh, have been Tony Lee, 27, Doug Glasgow, uh, number 60, also uh, Matt Totten, number 25, has been in there as well. And then the uh, big men up front, we've got uh, Brian Finnegan at one defensive end, Steve Cooper, who started out the ball game with that fine play, number 57, at the other defensive end. 
inside we've got uh, Andy Seifert and Mike McLean and of course uh, there will probably be some other big men alternating in there as the evening progresses but that's the Worcester defensive squad as we look to second and ten on the 43 oh there was some contact and that was Mike McLean 78 making the initial head-on contact and with some help from I'm Tony Lee and number 60 Glasgow uh, that was a good defense there loss of a yard on that play uh, Matt McCoy Third comes down. in as a, a well. extra defensive back uh, Tony Lee comes off for a little bit of a rest uh, a semi prevent defense nickel defense if you will Worcester of course expecting the pass Split back this time behind uh, Haynes. Haynes dropped straight back, looking, got plenty of time. Now he ran out. Nice catch. It's dropped. Oh, boy. And that was a uh, perfect play by Hayes. And First it was uh, he had the ball in his hands, but Hayes hit him just as he went to cover, uh, yes. cover it. And dropped it. It was certainly a, uh, a saving tackle there because it did jar the ball loose. And it brings up a uh, fourth down situation. And it will force Glenville into their first punt, I believe, Tony. It is. We're down to eight seconds in the quarter. John Hayes, John Murphy deep for the Generals. Hayes and Murphy back deep for the Generals. I watched them practice this return the other night. This kick is a little bit short and is down on about the 33, 34 <laughs> yard line. And the clock has run out. So at the end of the first quarter, our score is 13 to nothing, Worcester on top. Magazine has a number for you. And a number of important facts we think you should know. Here's the number. Keep it in mind, because it's your access to more entertainment options than ever before. That number is the key to the single biggest selling television guide in America's cable homes. And for only $2 added to your monthly cable bill, you can get TV Guide delivered right to your door every week. Just call 1-800-345-8500, extension 950. Now, TV Guide magazine has been around for over three decades, so you may think you already have our number. But if you haven't seen TV Guide lately, you haven't seen TV Guide. This handy little magazine offers you more than ever before on cable, network, and pay TV. More news and clues on what to watch and when to watch and who to watch and why to watch them. TV Guide whets your appetite for the week ahead with previews and features on upcoming shows, plus movie reviews you can really rely on. And there's the alphabetical pay TV movie guide which describes all the movies offered by the premium services for a full two weeks with ratings so you can keep an eye on what the children watch. Check out the sports calendar. Day by day and round the clock, our TV sports highlights put you in the thick of the action. Then, look behind the scenes and meet the shining stars and the rising stars, the folks who make jokes, make news, make money, and make your day. So whether you're a movie buff, news nut, football aficionado, boxing enthusiast, or just someone with a rock and roll heart, TV Guide has your viewing options covered. Call toll-free 1-800-345-8500, extension 950. You can order TV Guide for just $2 added to your monthly cable bill. That's 1-800-345-8500, extension 950 for TV Guide. You've got our number. Now, get the number one television guide in America's cable homes. As the season progresses, we will be having Players of the Week, but we already have some band members of the, the week, so let's salute them tonight. We've got a senior, Ted Berry. We've got uh, Lee Merchant, Molly Gingery, Ryan Gibbons, and Kim Dye. And believe me, I know, because I live right near the football field, that uh, these young men and women of the band put in as much time and as much effort as the football team does to provide you with a, a super pregame and halftime show. So we give a tip of the hat and a big salute to the band members of the week. Worcester Generals first and 10 on their own uh, 33, 34 yard line. Tony Lee right up the middle, up to about the 36 yard line. 
got uh, maybe two. John, unofficially, I've got Tony Lee for 50 yards in the first quarter and 12 carries. Certainly not a bad effort at all. Certainly isn't. Now, has he been the only He's ball carrier? He's been the only ball carrier. The only other two plays have been uh, two pass attempts by McCoy. One to Murphy and uh, one to uh, Matt Smith, both incomplete. Which would, uh, yeah, not trying to steal your statistics, but would make uh, Matt 0 for 2. That's about it. <laughs> Although, really, uh, Worcester's had a couple good catches. Murphy had one and Sleek had another, but they were thrown by the quarterback uh, from John Hay, which is uh, Marty Haynes. Excuse me, I think I said John Hay. I meant Glenville. Second and about uh, eight for the Generals. Murphy goes in motion. There was some defensive offside. Number 66, offsides. that's uh, the Arnold Williams encroachment. Murphy, of course, as long as he moves laterally, has the opportunity to move. And uh, you can see the official calling the penalty, and it uh, will cost the Tar Blooders five yards. And move the ball out to just beyond the 41. We'll call it the 42-yard line. And bring up a second and a long two. Just into the second quarter of action here at Mauer Field. John Hevlin and Tony Catanzarite bring you all the action here on Cable TV 9. And we've got a full schedule of both high school and college games for you right here this season. Stay with us. John Murphy again in motion to the top of your screen. And Tony Lee off the right tackle. Lee, the He's up close first to first down. I think he is just shy. Let's see if they, uh, the officials decide to measure. They're looking it over, and yes, they now they do want the change. I don't know why I uh, put myself out on the, the limb. I do each season, but I do believe it's just uh, a whisker shy. Tony, uh, while we have a moment, I mentioned, might mention what a super night for football it is. It is a first down. I was wrong. 0 for 1 on the season. <laughs> the temperature today probably did not even hit 70. But, of course, as far as the players especially are concerned, these first couple ball games, I think they worry about the heat and humidity, and, and tonight they, they certainly do not have to. That certainly is a beautiful night for football, especially this early. You know, here it, we're still in August. High formation again. Tony Lee has got a lot of running room there. Lost his footing as he crossed the 50-yard line. He got about eight. And, and not Tony the false Lee still limb. continues to be the only uh, ball carrier that has been utilized so far in the game. I'm sure that'll change here. Mitch uh, Sleek, number 90, in with the play. He and uh, John Hayes, number 44, continue to alternate 90% of the time. Corey Hupp also did sl uh, slip in there as a, a guard, a messenger guard. Ibax again behind McCoy. This time they fake it to Lee. They throw the ball down the field. It's overthrown. Yeah. And McCoy did not get to see whether that was complete or not. He was on his back. And I'm surprised because he gave a good fake to Tony Lee. But it did not hold the defense that time. They they sacked him just well, as he threw it. His fell down that time, I'd have to say. Well, they always say if you're going to throw it to throw it away you better throw it long and Matt got a lot on that ball it was it was way over the head of uh, Matt Smith third down three. it does bring up a third down situation for the generals they're just across midfield into a tar blooder territory Murphy to the bottom of your screen Hayes to the top they give it to Tony Lee and he fumbles the ball McCoy after it but a Glenville player's got it Tony Lee fumbles the football. there was good contact on Tony Lee a good hit and uh, also, Birdno seems like he may have been uh, shaken up a little bit. He's coming off injured. There was a flag on the play, but the way Glenville is reacting, it's a legal uh, motion against the Generals. The Tar Blooders will take over. While we've got these uh, players changing uh, out on the field, we'll take a break and be right back. And this
As you're watching the great sports action, wouldn't a pizza like this one taste great? Then call 264-0571 for the Pizza Bowl and let them bring a pizza, sandwich, or any great menu item right to your door. They offer free delivery and are open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Remember the pizza that we just showed you? The Pizza Bowl is waiting to make yours. Call 264-0571 for Degler's Restaurant and the Pizza Bowl. They have the food you're craving for. No gimmicks, no giveaways, just honest savings every day of the year. That's what you'll find at Mott's Decorating, 4188 Cleveland Road, Worcester. Mott's Decorating is serious about quality, and you should be too. At Mott's Decorating, they want happy and satisfied customers. That's why quality is spelled with a capital Q. Mott's Decorating, one-stop decorating for all of your vinyl floor, carpet, paint, wall covering, and now new at Mott's Decorating area rugs. Stop by Mott's Decorating, Cleveland Road, Worcester. This is the first time that Glenville's been in Worcester territory, and they did it on a fumble. Let's see if they take advantage of this now. Well, when you say they're in Worcester territory, just barely over the 50, Haynes goes back to pass, and he is sacked. McLean, 78. Threw him for a loss of about five yards. Mike McLean, second or third year? I believe this is third year as a starter. I think he started as a sophomore. Sophomore. So Mike m maturing into a fine defensive tackle. We'll also see him in the offensive line, I'm sure, quite a bit this year, either at guard or tackle. McLean in the cipher at the inside, guards or tackles. And Finnecum and uh, Cooper at the ends. Again the pass. Haynes this time throwing, and it is caught, and it's and fumbled. It's fumbled. <laughs> Worcester's got an excellent chance to recover. They got about four blue jerseys over there. And the officials indicate they have recovered the football, although there is a big pileup. Tony, this, this again, uh, the Tar Brothers seem to self-destruct. Uh, it was a nice catch, a good pass, and as he went to be tackled, uh, he uh, got away from uh, John Murphy that time, but then John wrapped his arms around him and he dropped the ball and John came up with it. I was going to say, there was no question in your mind that that was definitely a catch and a fumble. Oh, it was definitely okay. a catch. I agree. Let me plug my own show uh, by telling you that uh, here are the thoughts of area coaches and athletes on Coach's Corner with myself, John Hevelin, Thursdays at 6 p.m. on CATV9. First down for the Generals, Murphy on the wing. And they give it to John Murphy. John wants Spader. He's yeah, finally brought down run. on the 40. 15 yards. Well, I told you that uh, if they kept giving the ball to Tony Lee, they'd set up somebody, and that time they set off uh, John Murphy with a nice uh, inside handoff. John picked up a first down. That ball, the nose of the ball, right on the 40-yard line. Worcester is up 13 to nothing. The clock is down to 8 to 20 in the first half. Sure, the generals would like to uh, add as much insurance as they can before they go in at the half. The pitch this time to Tony Lee. And Tony's knocked down after a gain of about two. Tony, that was a play that started out looking like it uh, had a big gain written all over it, but the uh, Glenville defense read it well and came well, up and the plugged Glenville it. defense right now, I think, John, with all the time that Tony Lee's carried, is uh, I, I think they're, they're dogging Tony Lee. They're going where Tony Lee goes, and I think that's what made uh, the play before with John Murphy countering uh, so successful. I had mentioned uh, on that last series, uh, Brett Birdno had gone out holding his rest, uh, wrist. Uh, Brett is back at the fullback. Here's a whistle. Might just be too much time. That's what's called. Delay a game. So Worcester gives up five yards. The lay of game against the Generals. There are the Generals huddling. Matt McCoy waiting for a play to come in. It comes in from Mitch Sleek. 
Ball resting on the 44-yard line of the Tar Blooders. It'll be second in about uh, 14. Murphy on the wing again. Let's see if they give it to him again. They sure do, and it looks like it's going to work. Yep. Now, good defense. Good defense that time. John May picked up one yard. So it's going to bring up a third down and again about 14 yards. John Murphy uh, made some good lateral movement, but uh, nothing forward that time. Let's see if the uh, generals go to the air. As I mentioned, Murphy and Sleek both have catches, but those were thrown by Haynes. McCoy looking for his uh, first completion on the night. Murphy goes in motion to the top of your screen. The draw play to Tony Lee up the middle. He broke one tackle, still on his feet. He is shy of the first down, however. Inside the 40, call at the 36-yard line. Tony Lee uh, showing some strength there. There was a, an arm tackle attempted back about five yards, which he was able to break, Tony. And now Worcester General is going to take time out and, and talk it over. We indicated it's not a, a hot night, but uh, still the players do need a breather. Uh, they are getting some water out on the field. And while there's a break in the action, we'll take time out and be right back. Play great movies like Back to the Future and Return of the Jedi in the comfort of your own home. Just stop by Dino's Home Movies in Worcester and Smithville. With over 1,800 movies to choose from, Dino's has the movie you're looking for no matter what kind. And if you don't have a VCR, rent one from Dino's Home Movies at the foot of Bell Avenue in downtown Worcester and on Main Street in Smithville. It's Dino's Home Movies, open seven days a week. Edinger's Furniture has bedroom sets. Fine craftsmanship by fine names, like Burlington and Impact. At Edinger's, you'll find dining room furniture, a large selection priced to fit your pocketbook. Take a look at this three-piece living room set. Edinger's Furniture specializes in top-quality, well-built furniture that looks good in any home. They also carry mobile home supplies, like replacement doors and plastic pipe. Edinger's Furniture in the Hex Shopping Center on Lincoln Way East in Worcester. Stop by today. 6-13 remaining here in the uh, first half. Worcester on top, 13 to nothing. A fourth down situation for the Generals. Tony, I think they're too deep in the uh, tar blooder territory to punt it away. Uh, they won't. I believe they'll pass. Uh, if you'll notice, so far, John, uh, neither offense has really been that sharp. Now, Tony Lee has run well, but it, it takes much longer to get a, a running attack going. McCoy threw it over the middle. It was caught on the first hop by Matt Smith. He was open in there. Uh, McCoy just rushed it a little, baby. Too, too much. Uh, the Tom Blooders and the Generals, uh, as I said, uh, the Generals line uh, has, has really been moving the Tom Blooders defense back. But uh, the cuts, the timing is, is still off. But that's to be expected. It's the first game of the season, and I'm sure it's going to gel. It's going to get a lot better. Now, the defense is just the opposite. Defense has uh, looked very fine tonight. Yeah, they have shut out the tar blooders so they far. They usually do gel much quicker, though. Haynes with split backs throws it in, there, and it's in and out of the hands of the wide receiver. And that time, I think that uh, number 20, I believe that's Dave Mitchell. I think he heard footsteps, and John Murphy was right behind him. In and out of the hands, and this is something that has plagued uh, the Glenville receivers for two or three years, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. They've got good re uh, they've got good passers. They've had some good quarterbacks, but their receiving core has let them down just a bit. Second down and ten. Again, the split backs behind Haynes. He throws the same it play, and it is caught. And wow, almost off this to the time races. Though, uh, Mitch Sleek did make that tackle, but not before the Tarn Blooders cross oh, midfield down, down to the 46-yard line of the Generals. And I believe that's the second first down that Glenville's had. Well, they certainly would like to get some momentum going with 5.56 remaining here in the first half. They'd certainly like to get a score if they could. 
Eye back this time behind Haynes. And he pitches out this tailback wall. The ball was uh, bobbled, but Wall was able to uh, recover back there. Brian Wall alertly fell on the ball. He didn't try and pick it up and advance it. Brad Warner. Brad Warner, number 21 from his uh, outside linebacker position, coming in to uh, make sure that Wall stayed down. The loss on that play is uh, about eight or nine. And so it'll be second and about 19. And this would almost seem to force the Tar Blooders up in the air again. Split back behind Haynes. So it's just a little shuffle pass out there, but very successful. They've got to extend those yards back. That was number uh, 21, Victor Williams. He was able to shake off John Hayes, and it was up to Matt Smith to come over and make that tackle. Nothing fancy about that. The quarterback just turned and threw it out there to the speed of number 21, Victor Williams. Tony indicated they picked up a good uh, 10 to 12 yards. Uh, I'm going to call a third in a long seven. Ball is resting on the 44-yard line of the Generals. Hayes goes back to pass. He's looking to the top of your screen. It is complete for a first down out there to number 80, Rich Mitchell. Hayes and Murphy were over there to uh, knock him out of bounds. But Glenville beginning to gel a little bit with his passing offense, eating up a big chunk of yardage there. That ball is spotted on the 28-yard uh, line. Here comes Doug Glasgow back into the defensive lineup. Matt McCoy comes out. There's that uh, pass right down the line again to Williams. He's got it, and he's got good yardage. Inside the uh, 25, call it the 23. John Hayes, 44, coming up to uh, make the stop, but uh, not before. Again, as I mentioned, the Tar Blooders picked up eight yards, so it'll be second and a short two. We're down to under four minutes here in the second quarter now. Well, time becomes a little bit of an ally for the Generals. There's the pitch to the outside, the wall. Murphy with Tony Lee. Bring him down, but I think he's got the first down, Tony. I believe he does. The officials are going to measure this one, so we'll have a momentary delay. From our vantage point, it is very difficult to tell. Clock is uh, stopped on 3.35. But that is still uh, an eternity of time as far as uh, the Tar Blooders getting the ball in the end zone and chipping away at the Generals' 13 to nothing lead. So the Generals' defense, uh, which is uh, more intact than the offense from a year ago, are going to be called upon early. While we have this pause again, we might mention tonight that uh, the Triway Titans opening the season against Norwayne. Waynedale uh, over at uh, Fairless and Smithville opening against Inman Valley North. Split back, the quarterback on a keeper and he has got first the first game. down. They were shy by an eyelash, but uh, he picks it up there. Marty Haynes, the senior quarterback, picking up the yardage necessary. Of course, Tony, with a running play, it does mean that the clock continues to move. It's down uh, close to 315. <laughs> that ball is resting on the 17-yard line of the Worcester Generals. Back to pass is Haynes. He throws it over the middle. Incomplete. Almost intercepted wow, there. Wow, a couple Generals almost had a shot at that one. The best shot was John probably Murphy. John Murphy, yes. That was broken clear. 
That was an example, though, of throwing to spot. The uh, in number 80, Rich Mitchell had his back mm. turned when that ball was thrown. But had Murphy not gotten involved there, it might have been a completion. Second and 10. Again, Haynes go drops back to pass. And he is being tackled by Finnecombe, 59. Right. The defensive end, Brian Finnecombe, who had so many big plays there on the kickoff oh. last year, he had a group of tackles and has earned his stripes mm. this year enough to uh, be the starting defensive end. Makes a big play there. That's a loss of two yards. Again, and that clock, clock continues. continues to run, Tony. High back this time behind Haynes. Dropping back, looking, looking. He's being pressured. Matt Smith after him. Smith, McLean, and one other player. Matt Smith and Brad Warner on that side. Brad Warner also in there, number 21. And they all are the able to uh, drop Haynes for a big loss that time, all the way back to about the 29-yard uh, line. Fourth down, 30 yards to go for the first down. I, I guess you try a Hail Mary, don't you, Tony, at this point? You can't well, punt it. Fourth down, John, I think I put a picket line back there <laughs> about 20 yards well, out. Worcester <laughs> looks like they're going to put a heavy rush on. They do, and, and Matt goes. Smith dumps him. They blitz the outside linebacker, Matt Spliss, Smith, that's deciding to give no time to Haynes, and that worked out better than the picket line. Well, John, I guess if he doesn't get the pass, if, uh, they can't complete it. If Absolutely. They had rush on him that way while well, he's not going to get the ball off. So Worcester takes over on downs, and uh, with that quarterback sack, the ball came out to about the 37-yard uh, line. And let's see what Mack decides to do with a minute and 25 on the clock. Will he open up and go for another score or maybe just uh, kind of run out the clock and go in and regroup with a 13 to nothing lead? Birdno and Tony Lee behind Matt McCoy, the junior quarterback. And Matt has trouble. He dropped the ball. He now picks it up. He throws it out here, and it is incomplete. The only general near that was uh, number 90, Mitch Sleek, and Mitch was about 10 yards down the field. Just under a minute remaining here in the first half. For those of you that not only follow Worcester General football, but the College of Worcester Fighting Scots, we're very proud and happy to announce to you tonight that we will have all five home games of the Worcester Scots this season. Looks to be some movement by Glenville just uh, before the play. The handoff is to Tony Lee out to the 40-yard line. I do not see a flag, however. So the Glenville players must have uh, read the snap of the ball perfectly. Coach uh, Bob Tucker now coming back for his uh, second year at the helm of the Fighting Scots. And I know, Tony, I know you're uh, pleased and excited about uh, going back to cover. I think we were 2-0 and in the games we, we did were. last year. I'm really looking forward to doing those games again this year, John, as well as following the Generals. This is uh, really a lot of fun. John Murphy to the bottom of your screen. Matt Sleek to the top. It's a look into Murphy. He makes the catch. Nice catch on his knees, and of course it was uh, automatically down because he made the catch on his knees. And Tony, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that's the first completion for Matt McCoy. And you know that could do a, a lot for that uh, young man. I, I'm sure it will. Uh, I was just going to mention that we hadn't completed a pass yet. And glad I didn't. <laughs> me too. It uh, was enough for the first down. Worcester has the ball on the 47-yard line. That clock is down to two seconds. This will be the last play of the first half. McCoy throws it out to Murphy. It's intercepted. And Matt Smith and John Murphy make the tackle. That is the half. So at the end of the first half, the score is the Worcester Generals 13, the Glenville Tarblotters nothing. Please stay, stay tuned for the halftime show, the Worcester High School Band. Hi, I'm Tom Lyons, the 
performance Pontiac Gold GMC truck, 1363 Lincoln Way West, Worcester. Stop and see me. Take advantage of our low financing, dependable vehicles, and courteous service. That's Tom Lyon, performance Pontiac Gold GMC truck, your complete transportation center. I'm Dennis Hobson, but most people call me Hop. I'm a junior guard on the Ohio State basketball team, taking a lot of hard work to get where I am today, but that didn't leave time for drugs or alcohol. Not everybody can play basketball like I do, but everybody can work hard to be all they can be, and drugs and alcohol stop you from being all you can be. So find something you enjoy and throw yourself into it. You'll get a high that will last your life. Ladies and gentlemen, under the direction of Mark Scatterday and Jerome Rodenfeld, assisted by Dennis Bartelheim and Ann Gresser, the Worcester High School Marching Band. For their 1986 debut, the award-winning Majorettes and Flag Corps are now featured on an original composition by John Higgins. Here's Triumph.
Next, the band performs a circle drill to a feature by our percussion section. This is the Baby Elephant Walk. And now as a finale to our show, the band presents the music of John Williams in his triumphant patriotic salute to this year's Statue of Liberty celebration. Listen now to the mission. Ladies and gentlemen, the Worcester Generals Marching Band.
up and enjoy life. Face it with a smile. Straighten up and enjoy life. Make it all worthwhile. Keep your head high, that's a starter. Keep your back straight, it's much harder. Straighten up and face life. Good posture is in style. The best tip you can give anyone is protect your health. That includes keeping physically fit and paying more attention to the structural balance of your body. The American Chiropractic Association and your family doctor of chiropractic recommend periodic spinal examinations to guard against spinal health disorders. Good posture not only looks good, it makes you feel good too. So take a good look at your posture while you're standing, sitting, working, or playing. Straighten up and enjoy life. Good posture is in style. Straighten up and enjoy life. Good posture is in style. We're just about ready for the second half. As you can see here at halftime, our score is Worcester 13, Glenville nothing. Tony, you've been able to run down some uh, first half statistics for us. Why don't you share them with us? Yes, John, on the uh, Worcester side, uh, Worcester tried seven passes at one completion for eight yards, and uh, McCoy, Mike McCoy, had a uh, an interception right there at the end of the first half. Uh, Worcester's uh, Tony League had 19 carries for 72 yards the first half, but John Murphy had two carries for 15, and they were the only two to carry the ball. Uh, Worcester had 21 uh, running plays for a total of 87 yards, plus eight yards of passing, so a total of uh, 95 yards. Uh, offense. On the Glenville side, Glenville had 5-14 in the passing game for 61 yards, and that all came there in the uh, middle of the second quarter when they had that sustained drive that they ended up uh, dying down around the 5. Rushing, they had uh, 12 carries for a minus 50 yards. So uh, as far as the generals are concerned, they've had their uh, Glenville star bowlers really bogged down as far as the running game. Gave uh, Glenville a total of 11 yards offense in the first half with four first downs to Worcester seven first downs. I think that the statistics uh, certainly speak for the, the domination that Worcester has shown. And yet again, as we talked, uh, Glenville is a, a big play team. And with only a 13 to nothing lead, I'm sure Coach McFarland didn't say, relax, boys, this one's in the bag at halftime. I'm sure he wants to, to see a little bit more consistency out of the offense. And of course, uh, probably gave quite a bit of praise for the most part to uh, the defense, except for maybe the, the pass defense near the end of the first half. Well, John, uh, as far as Worcester's offense, majority of that all came in the first quarter. Uh, the 13 to nothing score was that at the end of the first quarter. Uh, Worcester's total offense in the second quarter was only a mere 45 yards. Uh, but then again, uh, when you look at it, uh, when Worcester did score, it was on a uh, getting good field uh, position with the mistakes that uh, Glenville made. So at 45 yards, even at that, we had the same offense we had in the first quarter. Well, but uh, I, I look for uh, Coach McFarland making things up. I think you're going to see a few other people running and a few other breakers in this summer. offense. Certainly, both teams did make some adjustments at halftime. Uh, temperature down on the field, uh, beginning to uh, cool off a little bit as, as uh, the sun has gone down. The evening breeze is beginning even to blow into the, the booth here. And again, as far as the players concerned, I'm sure that they are not minding that at all. Uh, Worcester this year having to uh, have a few more tonight. players go both ways. If I'm not mistaken, uh, John Murphy and Ed Rooney last year were about the only two players that had to go uh, both ways for the Generals on a full-time basis. This year, uh, that is not the case. They have uh, five or six players that are going both ways. And of course, that can take its toll in the the third and Next especially the, the fourth quarters early in the season. So John, on a night like tonight, this is we the ideal weather if you are going to be Pizza playing both has, ways. Uh, it's not going to be as hard Pizza on you. You're not going to get the cramps. You're not going to be doing the sweating that you normally do on a hot, muggy night. Bring it to the press box. Again, uh, with uh, Glenville, look for them to throw some more passes. Uh, Mark Haynes was really going with his passing there, there in the middle of the second quarter, and uh, they found some success there. If they control their mistakes, they're going to be right back in this ball game. Tony, we certainly were talking about uh, Worcester Generals right now, but uh, we mentioned the fact that we are going to be covering the Worcester Scots, and that means that uh, John Finn is going to be filling you in on the College of Worcester Athletics on Scott's Sports Capsule, which is aired Thursdays at 6.55 p.m. 
on CATV9. So uh, John, who is the Sports Information Director at the College of Worcester, will keep us up to date on what's You're happening with the Fighting Scots. And as we mentioned Bell, earlier, Tony and I will be bringing you general. the play-by-play -play on the uh, five Scots home games. Worcester is receiving. It's somewhat of a squib kick. It is picked up on about the 25 by John Hayes. Crosses John the 30, Hayes out to about the 36-yard line. And fine field position. We're about the 36, 37 yard line. And that's going to give Worcester a very good field position to start the second half. Sure, that Worcester would like to take this ball and uh, to get a sustained march going down and get six or seven more points, which would be just a little bit more comfortable than that uh, 13 to nothing lead they're enjoying at the moment. Brian Finnecum over the ball at center. Benicum checking with McCoy very quickly. They give to Tony Lee right up the middle. Tony with good second effort, and he gets it up Mark close Lee to the 45. Here. Marcus Cage on the tackle for Glendale. Make that second and two, so Tony Lee picks up quickly eight yards. Mitch Sleek uh, continuing to alternate with John Hayes, bringing in the plays. Messenger uh, wide receivers. Gain of seven, second down three. John Murphy going to the top of your screen. John Hayes to the bottom of your screen. Ibacks behind McCoy, second and a long two. Long count this time. Lee, right tackle, very close Tony to the Lee first down. The Glenville saying that the ball was close fumbled. I have seen no uh, indication of the officials of that, however. Tony, did you see the ball pop free? The ball bounced, uh, popped out, but I General thought that he got it back, ball. so uh, it worked out pretty good for Tony. The head official, that would be Mr. Uh, Leback, indicates that Worcester retained possession of the ball. First down, General. Looked like maybe uh, Brett Birdno, number 43, was the last to get off the pile, so if it was fumbled, it just may have been the fullback, Brett, who was able to uh, hug that ball. By the way, that was a first down for the general, so it is first and 10 on the 47. Look in pass to number 90, Mitch Sleek. Mitch Sleek pulls it in and picks up uh, uh, about uh, eight, nine yards. Across the 50 down to about the 44 yard line of the Tar Blooders. Tony, second completion for uh, Matt That's McCoy. The second one and eight tries. But I think. Uh, this is McCoy's first year. He's just a junior. His first year on varsity. Although line. he did throw quite a bit there in some of the games Ball last year. Of course, he is replacing Tom Rogers, who was a starter for two years. Tom has gone on to, if I'm not mistaken, West Point. Mm -hmm. Second down in a long one for the Generals. They give to Tony Lee on a bit of a counter play. Yeah. Tony breaks to the Tony outside, the and there is a flag, flag. however. Down in there by number 38, Tony Brian had first Wall. down yardage and more, but that old yellow flag slipped out of a pocket, and I see some Glenville hands uh, clapping. That was a clip. So that That's will the nullify run. the first down okay. and uh, cost the, the general some general. big yardage. We have a lady and although the yellow flag has been out uh, frequently, frequently tonight, there haven't been too many here. major penalties. This is one of the few it. major penalties we've seen. You may and of course, undoubtedly, uh, the Tar Blooders will accept it. Steve Cooper, who has played a lot of defensive uh, end tonight, 57, now coming in for Mike McLean. Mike, another young man who has been going both ways, defensive uh, tackle and uh, offensive uh, guard. So he's going to get a bit of a breather. And he is uh, asking Bob Platt to come over to uh, take a look at him. So he may have uh, been slightly injured. Here's Mitch Sleek in with the play. The ball spotted back on the general side of the 50. Call it the 47, where it becomes second and uh, just Point. about 10. Yes. Second and 10. Murphy at a wing back. Let's see what happens. Oh, there was offside encroachment, if you will, on the defense. Dead ball foul. Worcester will pick up five yards. And that uh, tar blooder got a little too anxious that time. Tony, it takes a lot of discipline with a young offensive team to uh, have a, uh, a snap on a second or a third count, but if you have been going continually on a first count, 
boy, the defense usually does jump. We have second down and five. So five big yards given back to the Generals who had lost uh, 15. And it makes it a second and five situation. Doug Glasgow coming out of the ball game. I'm not sure who brought that play in. Might have been Corey Hupp. Matt calls the signals, off left tackle, Tony Lee. Lee. He has been a workhorse tonight, and I think he's probably about a yard oh, shy of the first down. Marcus paid on the stop for Glendale. Tony is listed as a six foot, 180 pound junior. He, uh, he played uh, some uh, good football last year, junior varsity, and then, uh, if I'm not mistaken, broke a wrist and was out for a, a good bit of the season. But he certainly showed the promise and has come on this year to win that tailback position. Quarterback sneak, Matt McCoy, Matt McCoy I believe he's got the first sneak. down. Very close to the first down. Going right over his center. Oh, Ryan I Finnegan. believe he's got it, John. John Polk on the stop. And, of course, this is what I indicated that I thought that Worcester would like to do, and that is to get a First good sustained general. drive going here early in the third quarter, not only to establish the offense, but also to eat up some of the clock. There is number 62, which is uh, Corey Hupp coming in with the uh, play. Doug Glasgow coming out. Doug, another one going both ways at guard and inside linebacker tonight. John Murphy to the bottom of your screen. John Hayes to the top. The defense almost jumped again. McCoy throws it out to Murphy. Oh, he can't hang on. Matt McCoy's pass is headed for John Murphy incomplete. Uh, that, John was, uh, that was now a catchable Harper ball there. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's probably one of the very, very few that, that John will drop this year. He is a fine receiver. Got a good pair of hands. He did have to look back for right that. Down Twist down. his body a little bit. And uh, just couldn't hold on. Brings up a second and 10 situation though for the Generals. Again, John Murphy to the bottom of your screen. His man is off almost 10 yards. I might try that play again. No, they give it to Tony Lee and time. the defense was looking for him. He was met right at the line of scrimmage. Tony Lee the ball carrier. Tony is going to have to soak in a nice hot tub tonight or tomorrow his muscles are going to be super sore. Third down nine for the general. Doug Glasgow and now Mitch Sleek both go into the uh, offensive lineup for the generals. Replacing Corey Hupp and John Hayes respectively. John Murphy now to the top of your screen. High backs. McCoy back to pass, throws it out here, and a nice catch, Mitch Sleek. Oh, in that's traffic. It is a first down, as Tony's indicated. Mitch Sleek in traffic. Alan Harper on the stop. 15 the yards. Also there, ball on the 30-yard line. First and 10 general. Mitch gets a high five from Matt McCoy. I think they're both pretty proud of that one. We still have a wallet here in the press box. That uh, first down keeps the Worcester person. drive alive. The ball spotted right on the 30-yard line of the Tarbloaders. And the clock is down to 725 remaining here in the third quarter. So Worcester has eaten up a chunk of uh, time on this drive. McCoy, another long count. And Tony Lee fumbles oh. the ball. And it goes over to the Tarbloaders. Tony Lee fumbles the football. Tony had a good five yards, but somebody got a helmet in there and popped it loose. Bubble recovery by Joe Sanders for Glendale. So Worcester's good drive ends up uh, with no, no productivity. While uh, we're getting ready for the Tarbladders offensively, let's take a quick break. Hi, I'm Tom Lyon. Performance Pontiac Old GMC Truck. 1363 Lincoln Way West, Worcester. Stop and see me. Take advantage of our low financing, dependable vehicles, and courteous service. That's Tom Lyons, Performance Pontiac Old GMC Truck. 
your complete transportation center. freshman guard on the Ohio State women's basketball team. I really enjoy playing basketball, not because I'm good at it, but because I give it my all. And I couldn't do that if I consumed alcohol, and neither can you. Find yourself a sport or activity that you can give it your all, and stay away from alcohol. If you're dedicated enough to your sport or activity, you'll know enough to say no to alcohol. Brought to you by the Ohio High School Athletic Association and the Ohio Cable Television Association. There is the first play, a look-in pass, and a nice catch out there. Hardy Hayes pass. Complete to Victor Williams. 21, Victor Johnny Williams with the, the catch. The and Tony, they had used that first successfully right before loaded. the end of the first half, and they came right back to it. They are sacrificing their wide receivers because they know they're going to get hit when they get that ball, but it's, it's open in there. That pickup was uh, good for a first down. The ball crossed the 40, caught the 41-yard line. They fake that play and they shuffle it off to the tailback call. And Matt Three Smith played that very Wall. well. He gave Matt him uh, Smith, two yards, but he tackle. wasn't about to give him much Blue more than that. Brian Wall is the tailback, and he slipped out in there to the flat, hoping that area would be cleared, but the generals were able to cover. And as Tony indicated, the pickup was only about two yards. Second down eight. Cooper and Finnecum at the defensive 30, ends. Yard line. McLean and Seifert at the tackles for the Generals. There's the pass again out in the flats. Marty Hague. And uh, Williams. Williams bulldogs the ball. It's close another to another first, first down. down. Now they not quite. Short of one yard, John. Tony, of course, uh, maybe someone says, well, come on up and play them head on. But let's remember, these uh, young men that are the wide receivers for the Tarblooders have good speed. And if you come up and play the bump and run, uh, there's a, a, a more than a 50-50% chance they're going to beat you deep. So the generals defensively are in a bit of a dilemma. There was a mix-up. That's all I can say. The quarterback Quarter never did get rid of the ball. Down. There's a lot of pressure Mike there Glasgow. by number 60, Glasgow, Mike number McLean. 78, Mike McLean. By the way, we're happy to see Mike McLean back in there. We'd mentioned a little earlier that he had uh, come off and had uh, trainer Bob Platt looking at him. Glenville a little bit confused after that play and coming with a fourth down situation, decide they'll take time out. There we have a good look at uh, another group of, of Worcester High School uh, athletes, if you will, and that is the Worcester High School cheerleaders that provide a lot of the enthusiasm, pep, and support for the Worcester General football team. With our score, 13 to nothing, Worcester on top uh, and 541 remaining here in the third quarter. Let's You're take a break and we'll Worcester be right Disney back. Parents. As you're watching the great sports action, wouldn't a pizza like this one taste great? Then call 264-0571 for the Pizza Bowl and let them bring a pizza, sandwich, or any great menu item right to your door. They offer free delivery and are open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Remember the pizza that we just showed you? The Pizza Bowl is waiting to make yours. Call 264-0571 for Degler's Restaurant and the Pizza Bowl. They have the food you're craving for. No gimmicks, no giveaways, just honest savings every day of the year. That's what you'll find at Mott's Decorating, 4188 Cleveland Road, Worcester. Mott's Decorating is serious about quality, and you should be too. At Mott's Decorating, they want happy and satisfied customers. That's why quality is spelled with a capital Q. Mott's Decorating, one-stop decorating for all of your vinyl floor, carpet, paint, wall covering, and now new at Mott's Decorating area rugs. Stop by Mott's Decorating, Cleveland Road, Worcester. Page 49 of your program, Lisa is 
It is a fourth down situation. Glenville down by 13 points are going for it. The pitch to the outside. Oh, a couple of generals. Mitch, Mitch Sleek is going to have to run him down. He cannot do it. Wall is going to go all the way. And there's the big play we talked about. Brian Wall, number 38. And once you let those boys out side around that end, I'll tell you, they're going to go for you, John. For just a half a second, it looked like Mitch Sleek, number 90, might have a, an angle on Brian Wall, but uh, Brian turned on the afterburner and uh, left Mitch in the, the dirt. Uh, they had him in the uh, pit backfield, but they let him out. And once you let him out, they're going to go for you. So with uh, 529 remaining here in the third quarter, our score becomes 13 to 6 with a two point extra point uh, try. Looking to pass, looking, 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 still looking. Now throws it in the end zone, overthrow, incomplete. Good pressure by Worcester defense. Brad Warner in there. Uh oh, there is a uh, injured general. Somebody's really hurting back there. And there's also a flag on the play. But we do have an injured general down on the field. Looks like maybe a leg cramp, though, Tony. I cannot see the number of the individual, but just the treatment that is being given would seem to me to indicate a leg cramp. And again, although we did talk about it being a cool evening, nevertheless, in the first game, when the kid's adrenaline is pumping, I believe it's Mike McLean, number 78. Mike has gone uh, both ways uh, quite a bit tonight. And so this is uh, something that is going to happen. It is number 78, Mike McLean, but you can see he is getting up. Mike McLean. And really, Tony, the key here is to try and uh, keep him moving around yeah. so that that uh, doesn't knot up and stiffen up uh, any more on him. The extra point try then is no good, so penalty our score is Worcester 13 and Glenville and I, 6. I believe that the penalty will be marked Worcester. off on the uh, on the kickoff. The try for the extra two points, no good. We might mention to you that uh, it would be great if you could support your Worcester Music Boosters by visiting the concession stands at the home football games. The proceeds from the concession sales support the Worcester High School Music Program. In addition to the food, the Music Boosters this year are selling Worcester General watches for only $7. So we hope that uh, each of you, when you come to the Worcester High School football games, will uh, support the Worcester Music Boosters by visiting those uh, concession stands. As you can see, Tony was 100% correct. The penalty is marched off against Glenville on the kickoff, so Worcester should come out of this with the excellent field position, Tony. Let's see, we've got uh, Murphy, Hayes, and I can't pick up a number at the top of the screen there. Back deep for the Generals. I'm guessing it might be uh, Birdno. There's the whistle, here's the kick. Not much. It is knocked down and recovered there just across the 50. Well, one of the generals and really took a belt. That excellent field position there. I think that might have been Bo Steiner, number 96, who recovered that uh, ball. He took a pretty good shot for his efforts. It is Bo First Steiner. Bo uh, will probably be seeing action this year as a tight end for the Generals. I know Coach uh, McFarlane is very pleased with the, the offseason progress that Bo has made. Okay, Worcester has been stung now. Let's see if they can come back. Hand off this time to Birdno. His first carry of the night gets uh, four, almost five. Carrier. They have keyed so much on Tony Lee. It allowed Brett Birdno to get a nice chunk of real estate there. Give him five and call it second and five. Here comes Mitch Leak in with the play for the general. That clock is all the way down to 433 remaining here in the third quarter. 
Murphy to the bottom of your screen. Hayes to the top. High back. McCoy barking signals. Trying to draw off Glenville. There's the pitch to Tony Lee. Tried to cut back into the middle. And he didn't get much. Here there by David Mitchell. Leonard Davis. Tony Lee had uh, right around 70 yards uh, unofficially in the first half. On uh, how many carries, Tony, was that? 19. 18. He, 19. That's quite a, quite a bit, quite a few. It brings up third and four for the Generals, a very critical play if they're going to retain possession. Going to have to get this one off rather quickly or take a delay a game. Matt McCoy on a keeper. McCoy he fumbles keeper. the ball out of bounds. Right no, excuse me. Mark. That wasn't the ball that went out of bounds. He had about two yards on that. Must have been an arm pad. He got, yes, about two. It's short of the first down. It's going to bring up fourth down. And with the uh, rotation of the general fourth players, it looks three. to me like they are going to punt it away. Matt Smith did not have a good punt the first Matt time, although he had a pretty good roll, right but then there was a good run back on it. Good snap. And the kick is blocked, and it is picked up by Glenville, and he's going all the way. That's That's number touchdown. 20, Dave Mitchell. And now we have a completely new ball game, John. 13-12 with the extra point trying to come. We talked about a big play team. And Glenville has shown it. Two plays have put them right back in this ball game. The uh, first uh, punt that Smith tried, he didn't have a rush at all. And this one, they sent everybody but the kitchen sink. Well, it paid off for them. And, of course, this is an all-important, critical extra point at this uh, juncture in the game. And there, Glenville's going to have to hurry or get the delay a game called. They are going for two, which would give them the lead That's if they are successful. And there's flags. Worcester chasing the quarterback, and they've got him. So depending on what the flags are, depending on what the, there's some more flags as well. I believe Worcester was offsides, but a lot of flags. Going to be a lot of discussion by the officials. Plenty of Worcester generals around the officials. Warner, Cooper. They're taking it back where it looks like uh, Glenville might get another try. Illegal motion against Glenville. Face mask penalty against the general. Oh, Tony, that face mask hurt because uh, uh, Haynes was going out of bounds. If they'd let him run out, uh, the illegal motion would have uh, negated the uh, extra point. That's right. Now they get another Offsetting shot. Penalties. Offsetting penalties. Well, try the well, I'm glad I was wrong that time. <laughs> Perhaps you can hear the Worcester crowd trying to exhort the defense to hold them. Haynes looking left this time, throws it out there. It is good. There's John Bob Hayes, Hayes, a little late on his coverage. Extra point complete. The so Warriors. Glenville takes the, the lead. 14-13 with 2.51 remaining here in the third quarter. Program. And we certainly do Warriors. have a new ball game. There. You have won a large pizza at Matzo's of Worcester. Bring that program to the press box. Amy Reardon's signature on page 49 of your program. You have won a large pizza at Matzo's of Worcester. There are again some of the Worcester uh, cheerleaders. Uh, we might talk about the college uh, team again real briefly here. That Before every college of Worcester Scots football game, tune in at 6 p.m. for Time Out with Tucker with Coach Bob Tucker Garrett Wednesdays on CATV9. Certainly looking forward to Got covering the Fighting Scots this fall. 
But right now we've got the fighting Worcester Generals out there on the field. And uh, they're going to have to claw their way back into this one. They're down by a point. There's a short strip kick taken again by Steiner. And he is Bo really Steiner. racked. But Bo holds on. And right the, around. Uh, Glenville Tugboat is really up right head. now. For Glenville. They are fired up. There's no doubt about it. There must have been six of them on the back of Bo Steiner. But uh, Bo is able to hold on. Ball spotted on the 37-yard line of the Generals. Here comes Matt McCoy out. First and 10 Generals. First and 10, Murphy to the bottom of your screen, John Hayes to the top. Ibex behind the quarterback McCoy, Tony Lee. The and they're looking for him at this point in the game. He got a couple, but those were tough yards. First Out to about Polk. the 39-yard uh, line. Second and about uh, eight for the Generals. Here comes Mitch Leak in with the uh, play. Clock is down to minute and 53, remaining here in the third quarter of action. Worcester went in at half with a 13 to nothing lead. They have dropped to a 14 to 13 deficit on two big plays. And that pass attempt out to John Murphy was blocked at the line of scrimmage. Matt McCoy's pass was knocked down by Joe Sanders. So it brings up a third and eight for the Generals. Third down eight. Ball in the General 39 yard line. Here comes John Hayes in with the play. And Finnecum comes out over the ball at center. Eye backs again behind McCoy, the junior quarterback. Long count, and he drops straight back to pass, looking screen out in the flat to Matt Smith. He's got plenty of running room out here, and he's got the first down yeah. out to midfield. A well-conceived play. Brought down by Marcus Hayes. But Matt Smith may have been hurt. He's down right at the 50-yard line. And that could be a very, very costly first down if Matt is seriously injured. He, of course, is not only the uh, tight end offensively, but a uh, outside linebacker. And it looks like maybe he's got a cramp as well. Trainer Bob Platt out there just uh, immediately with him. McLean is still on the sidelines uh, fighting cramps, Tony. Do you see him down there on the bench? There's Matt Smith coming off under his own power. As they spot the ball, the nose is just an eyelash short of the 50-yard line. It was, however, enough for a first down for the Generals. Bo Steiner, 96, has come in at the tight end replacing Matt Smith. Birdno up the middle. Brett Birdno's Brett got Birdo five quick good yards. Yard they were looking for Tony Lee on the outside, Tony. Ryan Wall on sure the looked that way. Uh, Birdno had a wide open field there. Second down, five. Clock is under a minute here, remaining in the third quarter. Second down and five. Murphy to the bottom of your screen. Hayes to the top. Ibex behind McCoy. And again, it's Burno up the middle. First down and more inside the 40. Down to the 39-yard line. So Brett Burno is picking up uh, nice chunks of real estate as uh, they decoy Tony uh, Tony Lee. Third quarter of pizza at Machos of Worcester. Locked down to 30 seconds now. Still got uh, one more quarter of action, and it's certainly anybody's ball game at this point. Worcester down by a single point, 14-13. And we've got Steiner in there, Bo Steiner in place of Matt Smith, who was injured a few plays back. Tony Lee this time up the middle. 
two or three tough Bernie yards. Reed with the football. John Polk. Yes, it. as they Stay mark the ball, the it, it's only two. Makes it second and eight. And uh, that is the end of the third quarter. So at the end of three, we've certainly had a turnabout. We've got Glenville on play, top by Glenville a score of 14, 14 to 13. 13. And we'll be right back with a fourth and final quarter. Great movies like Back to the Future and Return of the Jedi in the comfort of your own home. Just stop by Dino's Home Movies in Worcester and Smithville. With over 1,800 movies to choose from, Dino's has the movie you're looking for no matter what kind. And if you don't have a VCR, rent one from Dino's Home Movies at the foot of Bell Avenue in downtown Worcester and on Main Street in Smithville. It's Dino's Home Movies, open seven days a week. Edinger's Furniture has bedroom sets. Fine craftsmanship by fine names, like Burlington and Impact. At Edinger's, you'll find dining room furniture, a large selection priced to fit your pocketbook. Take a look at this three-piece living room set. Edinger's Furniture specializes in top-quality, well-built furniture that looks good in any home. They also carry mobile home supplies, like replacement doors and plastic pipe. Edinger's Furniture in the Heck Shopping Center on Lincoln Way East in Worcester. Stop by today. While we have a moment, we might mention to you again that next week we will be traveling over to Triway High School to bring you the uh, game between the Triway Titans and the Worcester Generals. Hope you'll be able to catch it uh, in person, but if not, we'll have it for you at 11 p.m. right here on Cable TV 9. And, of course, uh, this is always a big uh, rivalry game. Coach uh, Bill Barron now in his second season at Triway, and uh, they did come off a uh, winning season last year under uh, first-year head coach Bill Barron. So I know they will be a worthy opponent for the Worcester Generals. Second and eight for Worcester as we begin the fourth quarter of action. Long count by McCoy. And Birdno, this time yes, nothing Birdno, doing. Got a yard. Get it by Leonard Davis. Two yards. They do give him forward progress as Tony indicates for a bounce uh, to make it uh, third and a long six. Might add, John, at this point that uh, McCoy's passing in the third quarter. Uh, he completed three out of five, and he had something like uh, 30 yards on those three passes. So it's uh, much, much improved over the first half. Third and a long six. They give the ball to Murphy on an inside handoff. John he got a couple, but not enough. And it'll bring up a fourth down situation. That ball will be spotted right around the 35-yard line, which is still about five yards short of the first down. And it looks like Worcester's going to try down. another punt. It would have to be, I would think, a coffin corner type thing to drive Glenville back uh, inside the 10 if they can. Remember, Matt Smith has not had a lot of success Matt tonight. Smith his uh, first punt went off the side of his foot. The second one was blocked and run back for a touchdown. And they've got eight people coming. He gets a nice kickoff. It bounces on the... Uh, Bounced on about the five and is uh, ruled dead on about the one. You can't ask for anything better than that. The third time was a charm for Matt Smith. Well, that's nice to see these fellas come back, John. Uh, you think that Matt would be gun shy after getting the last one blocked, but uh, the eldest boy's in there and he did a good job. Well, it's nice to see Matt back in there. Of course, he went out with that uh, leg injury and Bo Steiner was in, so Matt was able to come back and not only kick the ball away, I see he is staying in at his outside linebacker position. So it all falls upon the shoulders of the Worcester defense, and with the exception of uh, two defensive lapses on uh, two plays, they have had a fine defensive effort tonight, and they're being called upon now to uh, hold Glenville and possibly even cause a turnover. Glenville not afraid to throw right down on the goal line. Threw a little pass out there to Vic Williams, Williams number that's 21. Time Matt Smith was not going to be denied. He stayed right with him up close. 
I think he has to at this juncture, Tony. Gain of two yards, second down eight. Certainly hope that uh, Triway is uh, having a good game tonight against Norway, that Smithville is doing all right against Indian Valley North, and uh, Wayne Dale and uh, Fairless are having a, a good ball game. Just three of uh, the other local teams. Of course, we should uh, also mention Orville as well, which is uh, playing Canton South tonight. And too much time. Yes, I that's going to cost uh, Glenville some yards. Delay of game penalty against Glenville. Delay of game against Orville. Of course, it can only be uh, what half the distance. Half the distance It'll to be the about a yard and a half. Be down about the one and a half yard line. That's what it does. Also, is I think uh, play with your mind a little bit. It does. Second down and uh, close now again to 10 yards for Glenville. Again, they're dropping back to pass. He's in the end zone. He's just got out of the end zone and he's nailed. Marty Haynes avoids the safety. Wow, that was almost the a safety. One yard line. And of course, the, the two points would have given Worcester the lead, Tony. It certainly would have. Brings up third down. Nine yards to go he for the first uh, actually might have picked up almost a yard on that play, and so it brings up a third and a long nine. If Worcester can hold here, it would still be a difficult punt to get it out of that end zone. It certainly would, and it would certainly give uh, Worcester a fine field position here. You can see uh, the We're down to eight and a half minutes, so. Uh, there's a pass. It's a, it's a blooper out there. It is, oh, in and out of the arm. there's a flag. Pass and Jennifer Allen Harper incomplete. Brings up fourth down. As Tony indicated, there's a flag. It looks like it's illegal procedure, legal it motion. Illegal motion on the wide receiver out there. He must have took off before the ball was snapped. So Worcester should uh, go ahead and decline this and force the tire blooders into a punt. And uh, Tony, I think you're right. Worcester. Uh, should get the excellent field position out of this kick. You can see the official indicating that the penalty has been declined by the generals. And John Hayes, John Murphy, and Andre Mitch uh, Sleek all dropping back for, for the generals to field this punt. Glenville, a punter making John sure Murphy, he is John well Hayes in front Hayes. of the end line. Gets the kick away. John Murphy takes it on the 30, 25 and is down on about the 20. 19 yard Murphy line. The it is there by Brian Wall. So Worcester is 20 yards away from a go ahead touchdown, but John Murphy is, looked like he might have been injured. We're quickly gonna take a break and be right back. Mott's Decorating. They're serious about quality and you should be too. At Mott's Decorating, they want happy and satisfied customers and that's why they're serious about quality. There are no gimmicks, no giveaways, just honest savings every day of the year at Mott's Decorating. 4188 Cleveland Road, Worcester, phone 345-6018. For paint, carpet, wall coverings, ceramics, vinyls, and more, one-stop decorating at Mott's Decorating on Cleveland Road, Worcester. After the big game or for your next party or get-together, stop by Dino's Drive-Thru to pick up your favorite potato chips, candy bars, or other snacks. Dino's Drive-Thru has a large selection of everything you need to make your next party a big hit. With two convenient locations at the foot of Bell Avenue and on Lincoln Way east of Worcester, it's Dino's Drive-Thru. Make sure you put Dino's on your next party list. With 8.15 remaining here in the ball game, Worcester with a, a fine opportunity. The final spot on that ball is closer to the 18-yard line than the 20. McCoy Bark signals, gives it to Tony Lee. Tony got two or three tough yards. And there's uh, some scrambling and pushing and shoving and finally a flag. We'll just have to wait and see which way it goes. Personal foul against Glenville. Oh, Dead a very costly foul. mistake by one of the Glenville players. A personal foul is going to be called against Glenville. That would be half the distance. 
That'll be down about the eight yard line, John. Tony, I honestly did not see what happened there to, to cause the flag to be thrown. I'm sure the Glenville coaching staff uh, is not very happy at all. Half the distance to the goal penalty against Glenville for personal foul. That penalty put the ball very close to first down. In fact, I'm almost surprised they're ball not measuring it. And I guess they are going to measure. Well, I was prophetic, I guess. I think they are going to measure. Official timeout for a measurement is very close to the first down. So regardless of whether this is a first down or not, Worcester will have the ball inside the 10-yard line. We are just now under uh, eight minutes. It's The clock's at 7.47. Worcester down by a single point, 14-13. And it's the no way. just shy. Six to eight inches. That might be a blessing. That really almost gives the generals I, an extra play, Tony. I was thinking that uh, they've got two downs to go ahead and uh, get a first down and put them that much closer to go in. Now, Coach, uh, Coach McFarland sometimes likes to go to the three deep. He has not here. We've still got the eye backs, Birdno and Tony Lee behind Matt McCoy, the quarterback. Let's see if they try anything fancy or go for that uh, six inches they need. They give it to Tony Lee off left tackle touchdown. and he's got the touchdown. Tony, Tony Lee touchdown. touchdown. So Worcester, Worcester Lee, regains the lead. 19 to 14 with the extra point try yet to come. They had basically held Tony Lee in check for the second half, but he was able to break loose there. And Worcester wants timeout. I'm sure Coach McFarland wants to settle down his team and uh, work out a play that, that's uh, going to be successful for the extra point. While we have this timeout, we will break as well with our score. Worcester 19, Glenville 14, and 738 left in the game. Choice strip steak dinner or this great tasting chicken dinner. These and many more delicious dinners are available from Degler's Restaurant on Lincoln Way, east of Worcester. In this commercial, we decided to show you how good the food actually looks, not use still photos of dinners like some places. At Degler's Restaurant, these are just a few of the great dinners and sandwiches waiting for you. Stop by Degler's Restaurant in the Wayne Lanes Plaza. Eddinger's Furniture is this area's leader for top quality, well-built furniture at a price you can't afford. They carry a large selection of recliners, just the thing for the weekend sports watcher. Eddinger's has recliners for as low as $99 by fine companies like Lane and Franklin. Eddinger's also has Eagle and Acme brand pick groups available in over 100 different fabrics for only $549. Eddinger's is also your mobile home supply store for such items as replacement windows and plumbing fixtures. Eddinger's Furniture in the Het Shopping Center on Lincoln Way East, Worcester. Tony, I, I cannot tell at this point whether or not uh, Worcester's going for one or two. Well, I'm they will go for two, two John. They? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, if they go for two and they make it, well, then uh, the other team's got to go for two if they score again. The generals will go Worcester for not using points. the three deep. They're using uh, the I formation behind Matt McCoy. And they give it to Tony Lee off right tackle. He's Nothing not really. Brought down short of the goal line. He is uh, denied the extra point. So our score remains 19 to 14. 738. A lot of time remaining Mitchell here in the ball game. Again, let us remind you that next week we will be going cross town to cover the Triway Titans Worcester General game. We'll have it uh, for you right here on cable tv 9 at 11 p.m hope you can uh, make it over to triway to see it live and then uh, catch it uh, again here on cable tv 9. this year as well we will be covering all five of the uh, scott fighting scots home games and uh, jack just uh, check here on cable tv 9 for more information i'm not mistaken the first game will be played on uh, saturday september 13th against mount union 
Coach Bob Tucker in his second year trying to lead the Fighting Scots. Well, Worcester, Tony being able to meet the challenge here in the fourth quarter, at least uh, so far. They'll have to kick the ball Bumper off here. Denny Shear gives it a ride and whistles all over the field. And I don't think he heard a whistle. And uh, that may cost somebody some yardage. There seems to be a bit of confusion. Timeout being called by, by Glenville. Apparently before the kick was made, Tony. It had Apparently. to be. Well, kind of an unusual uh, circumstances there. Perhaps Glenville uh, trying to put on a return to the left or right, uh, spotting something in, in Worcester's uh, kickoff team. I don't know. Tonight's game ball was won by well, the John, uh, Kirk of Worcester. Looking at the third quarter, you can see now why Glenville always ends up uh, right up on top up there. Once they got started, they uh, seemed to move pretty well. They've got a lot of speed. They hit hard. And, and attitude. The never give up attitude. It might have been easy to have uh, quit at halftime being again. down 13 to nothing and a minus 50 yards rushing. But uh, they have had a winning attitude, and it has kept them in the ball game. And in fact, uh, till this recent Worcester touchdown, put them into the lead. There was a whistle, and here's a squib kick taken on about the 33. And uh, young man is brought Victor down Williams. on about the 43. Ten-yard return. Tackle there, uh, number 88. Knocked out of bounds by Mike Hughes. Which is uh, Mike Hughes of the general. Mike is a junior, 155-pound wide receiver. So again, the responsibility falls upon Worcester's defense to hold this uh, explosive big play offense of the Glenville Tarblooders. The clock is down to 7.33. Nice play there by Brian Finnicum. Brian fought off a block and brought down the quarterback, Marty Haynes. Ryan, as we mentioned, uh, getting this starting role this year off of the specialty teams a year ago where we could almost count on him being on the uh, tackle on the kickoff, it Tony. Certainly was. Loss of two yards on the play, second down 12. The Tarnblooders lost a couple, make it second and 12. I look for that ball to go in the air. A lot of razzle-dazzle. Oh, Cooper and Warner, 21-57. Throw him for a That's big loss right, there. And the defense has risen to the occasion, and they are sticking it to him right now. Steve Cooper, of course, 57, a standout last year as a junior defensive end. Brad Warner getting a, a chance this year to break into that defensive lineup as an outside linebacker. They did a fine job there. Well, the left side of the line. Worcester defense. Third down and uh, 20, Tony, what do you say? Oh, a good, a good 20. Worcester putting in the nick nickel defense. Uh, McCoy in there as well, Mike Mc or Matt McCoy. And dropping straight back is a quarterback. He sees a seam, he's rolling out. He's being chased by Seifert. And it looks like Warner had him. And finally, Cypher to Sleek in uh, Murphy all bring him down. Got a nice pickup, though, of about 13 or 14 yards. Good run. One of their more successful uh, rushing plays fourth of the night. Down, ball on their own yard it line. does bring up a fourth down, somewhat of a do or die situation. It's a fourth and seven. They are going for it. The ball resting on the 45-yard line of the Tar Blooders. The clock is down to 5.53, and as Tony indicates, there was no uh, decision to be made. They're going for it all the way, looking for the pass. It's up in the air. It should be intercepted. Hayes has got it on the 35. John Hayes with the interception. Marty Hayes pass intercepted by John Hayes. I see no flag. Worcester should have the football. Worcester does have the ball. 
Tony, third uh, interception of the night for the there general. Was, there was a mix up there someplace. Uh, he threw the ball. I think he was waiting for his wide receiver to break downfield. And the wide receiver just went down a few steps and came out. Okay, we're going to take time out real quickly and be right back. Hi, I'm Tom Lyons, performance Pontiac Old GMC Truck, 1363 Lincoln Way West, Worcester. Stop and see you. Take advantage of our low financing, dependable vehicles, and courteous service. That's Tom Lyons, performance Pontiac Old GMC Truck, your complete transportation center. I'm Dennis Hobson, but most people call me Hop. I'm a junior guard on the Ohio State basketball team, taking a lot of hard work to get where I am today, but that didn't leave time for drugs or alcohol. Not everybody can play basketball like I do, but everybody can work hard to be all they can be, and drugs and alcohol stop you from being all you can be. So find something you enjoy and throw yourself into it. You'll get a high that will last your life. First and ten for the Generals. The ball just shy of their own 35-yard line. The give is to Tony Lee. Tony twisting, Lee fighting, carrier. digging back to the and line of scrimmage and maybe a yard. All importantly, the Generals do keep that clock moving down. Tony, I, uh, the, there have been three interceptions, and I think each of the defensive backs have one. Murphy, Sleek, and now Hayes all have an interception tonight. That's got to make them feel good. Well, it's certainly working in tandem. <laughs> Second down and about nine for the Generals. They can't afford to be too cautious here. They need at least a, a couple first downs to run that clock out. McCoy on a keeper. Got good yardage down the sideline. Up close to the 50. Down. Gets to the 49 yard line. Finally brought down in there by Rich Mitchell. Well, there was something that was certainly unexpected. And we do have a Glenville player who was down momentarily. He is now getting to his feet. That is one of the first downs that I was hoping the Generals would be able to get. We might uh, mention to all First of you out there out. that uh, you can see how your team did uh, in Friday night football action on the CATV9 weekend scoreboard. Scores will be seen every 15 minutes on Channel 9 over the weekend. So if uh, you can't wait for Saturday's paper and you don't know, check our scoreboard. Bird 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 no. Crossing the 50-yard line. Gets to the 47-yard line. Spot David that on Mitchell the, the 40, uh, 47, five-yard gain. Tony, do we have an idea how much uh, Birdno has uh, down gained tonight? He's got 23 yards and five carries. That's a pretty uh, good average. It certainly is. Uh, sparingly, they've been using him. Clock is down to 3.30. So it does become an ally of the generals. They've got to cover those points and keep it moving. McCoy barking signals. Long count. This is Tony Lee up the middle. And he's got Tony, another Tony for good yard is close to the got first down if he doesn't have it. Well, he does have it. There's just no, no way he doesn't. But again, the hits he's been taking, he's going to need a hot bath tonight. <laughs> Maybe one in the morning. First Those are going to be some sore <laughs> upper body muscles. Well, light muscles as well. He's taking some pretty good shots tonight. Mitch Sleek in, in with the uh, play. John Hayes going off. Clock now drops below two minutes. We're down to 2.55. And it is a first down situation for the Generals. Birdno up the middle. Right, Birdno up the middle for the general. And it looks like the Tar Blooders are going for the ball as well as the tackle. Marcus Tate on the stop. 
Birdno got uh, about three, Tony. Three. That last carry of uh, Tony Lee's unofficially put him over 100 yards for the night, John. Well, that'd be great for this young man. I uh, know Wong Win uh, certainly set a mark last year that uh, all backs in the future are going to be looking after that uh, 1,600 yards. Second down and seven, and this may be delay of game. Yes, it is. So Worcester trying to use up as much of the clock as possible, delay uses up uh, just a little bit too much. The clock now stopped at 2.02, but it will cost the Generals uh, five yards, and I'm sure Coach McFarland didn't want that. Now back at second down, 13. Mitchley coming in with the uh, play from Coach McFarland. Murphy to the top of your screen, sleek to the bottom. They give it to Tony Lee. Tony staying on his feet, fighting for more yardage inside the 40. He's still not down as they blow the whistles. He got to about the 37, 38 yard line. And he's back down to where we were before the five yard penalty. Earlier tonight, we mentioned some of the uh, Worcester Generals coaches. We mentioned that Gary Green had a new assignment. I think we mentioned the new coach, Mike Gallagher. We missed a couple coaches, uh, uh, Larry Foltz, uh, Mike Zerker, Jim uh, Chempo, and uh, perhaps uh, the dean of the staff, although he is no longer the head coach, Roman Majerzak, over 30 years in coaching. Just tremendous. McCoy on a keeper is nailed. Oh, it was a late flag on a late hit. And this is lack of discipline right there, John. Uh, I know uh, Todd Bullers are right now, Todd Bullers, pardon me, they're really kind of frustrated right just a minute left to go and they want their hands on the ball. But that cost them a first down. Yes, Tony, that, that really that cost them. It would have been third and about eight. Well, Excuse me, down. it would have been fourth, fourth down and about eight. eight. And now we'll give them a, a first down. We have a uh, timeout on the field, not because, well, maybe because of the penalty, but also because there is an injured tar blooder. As you can see in your picture, he uh, is being attended to. Matt McCoy now calls timeout as well. I'm not, not sure what well, that's all uh, about. They wouldn't uh, meet it, but I think uh, Coach McFarland wanted just to uh, settle them down. They've got a minute, but they want to make sure they don't make a mistake now. 15-yard penalty against... We Let's might uh, mention again to you foul. that uh, this year would be a good time to start the school year with a new Worcester Generals watch which are, are available for only $7, uh, available through the Worcester Music Boosters concession stand at all home football games or by calling 264-2674 or 345-8114 or at the Worcester High School. The number there is 264-9948. For seven bucks, you can't beat it. You get a watch and you help the uh, Worcester Music Boosters. And of course, uh, all that money goes right back into the Worcester Music Program, which has uh, been an outstanding one for many, many years. On the Glenville, 24-yard you line. You can see Coach McFarland out there trying to settle down this young offensive team. A lot of skilled players uh, are gone from a year ago, and yet they've hung tough tonight, and I think that's what Mac's trying to do, just settle them down. You saw his arm on the shoulder of Matt McCoy. This is uh, Matt's first start as a... a the first and stringer is a junior. And I believe as the season goes on, uh, this will be a team to be reckoned with along the road here. 1-1-1 one, one, one left on the clock, a minute and 11 seconds. It is a first down for the Generals. You may see Matt just hold on to it himself. You do. He just falls down. We'll have to wait and Bubble see how many times the Tar Blooders uh, can call timeout, but it won't be four, and that's what the Generals have in place. 
In fact, they are not even calling one here, so the clock uh, is down under a minute, down to 50 seconds. And of course, uh, Coach McFarland's uh, philosophy here is that the fewer people that have to handle the ball, the less chance there is for anything to go wrong. So look for McCoy to hang on to it again, two or three times, whatever's needed. He does again. Matt McCoy falls on the football. 28 seconds remaining. Now uh, time is called I by Glenville. And let's see, officially that clock is stopped with 25 seconds remaining. Worcester has a third down situation. So they have two more plays to eat up the clock. Again, let us remind you that Tony and I will be traveling over to Triway High School next week, and we will be covering the Generals as they take on the Triway Titans, who tonight uh, are facing Nor Wayne. It's always a game we enjoy doing, John, because we've got a lot of our viewers up in the uh, Triway area. Absolutely, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, I'll check with our producer, but I think we have three Triway games on this year, and we're also going to uh, slip in a Smithville game uh, and one that uh, we covered a couple years ago, Tony, the Smithville Ritman game, uh, which is always a, a dog fight. So we, we've got a, a full lineup of high school football and of course again, you add to that the uh, five Worcester Scots uh, home games. Uh, I'm just uh, real pleased and excited about the coverage we're going to be able to provide right here on Cable TV 9. Here is the third, third down, down play 13. for the Generals. What a general. 25 seconds remaining. Matt McCoy calls the signal. And McCoy falls, falls down. You can see the Glenville Tarblooders desperately trying to clutch that football away from M McCoy. And that should be the last play of the game. It is at 13-12. You will probably begin to hear the fans count it down. Again, our score, 19-14. 2-1. There it is. That's our congratulations.